Hi everybody, I'm back for another week of Junior English. Uh, as always, this video is entirely supplemental. Everything you really need is in your written packet that you can pick up from the school or have delivered by the school buses uh, or reach through the NTI link on the district website. Uh, but if it helps you to have somebody kind of talk you through the week, that's what I'm here for. So I got you for that. Uh, for this week, you have exactly one short story and one piece of writing. That's it. Um, this is our last modernist writer, and it is the famous Ernest Hemingway. Um, the Snows of Kilimanjaro is widely regarded as his best story. Um, and I believe Hemingway is a better short story writer than he is a novelist, although he was a famous novelist and his books were bestsellers uh, and are repeatedly listed on in the top ten uh, on uh, publishers' lists of the best American writing, of you know, the, the best ever American writing. But I actually think Hemingway's gift was in short stories. Uh, for one thing, even though this is a long story, and it is, um, Hemingway really is the soul of brevity. While this is a long story, in another author's hands, it probably would have been a novel. Uh, Hemingway is famous for what he leaves out. He leaves a lot to the reader's interpretation. Um, and it can feel a lot like listening in on a stranger's conversation, which is something that you can do. You jump to conclusions about strangers' conversations all the time. You decide that the couple at the next table is probably getting ready to break up, or the kid three seats down at the movie theater with his parents is in trouble for something, and that's why he's at the movies with his parents. We, we listen in on conversations like that all the time, whether we should or not, and we draw conclusions about what's going on. So if you come at it with a, a, a healthy sense of curiosity, like you bring to your everyday life, it's really not that hard. But it can often feel for the first two or three pages like you don't understand what's going on. It all does eventually become clear as long as you stick with it and trust him and, and have a sort of healthy curiosity about what's going on with these people. Hemingway is a very cinematic writer, and we, we see this all the time, actually, with movies and with television shows. The, what they call the cold open of a television show, uh, that, that little bit that happens before the opening credits, is often confusing, especially with dramas and with science fiction and fantasy. Uh, because they're hoping you'll come back to find out what's really going on. Hemingway utilizes that technique. Uh, and th he does not explain a lot. You just have to kind of go experience things with the characters. That's what he's going for. Now, this is a long story and it can be challenging. I have... So I've given you two things. One... I've given you a link to the Cliffs Notes on the NTI page on the district website. So the Cliffs Notes are right there. Now, I don't worry about you only reading the Cliffs Notes because the Cliffs Notes, if anything, are longer than the actual story. That's how much is going on here. And that should tell you a thing or two about how concise. Hemingway actually is. He's wicked hard to summarize because what he gives you is practically a summary in itself. Um, he doesn't include a word that doesn't absolutely have to be there. So it's very hard for Cliff Notes or Spark Notes or somebody like that to try and dismantle the story and explain it and make it shorter. Like they can't. Um, when you consider that the Cliff Notes are big blocks of text, instead of the copious dialogue that Hemingway is known for. A lot of the story takes place in dialogue. Uh, but when, when you take into consideration that they're using big blocks of text instead of dialogue that's just a few words per line, um, 
you're going to be doing more reading if you try to read all the Cliff's Notes than if you just read the story um, and use the Cliff's Notes when you kind of get stalled. Um, but the Cliff's Notes also include uh, a good glossary. One of the reasons that Hemingway could be as concise as he was is because he had a very, very strong vocabulary. So you are apt to run into vocabulary words that you haven't seen before. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the Cliff's Notes page, uh, you, you'll find a, a glossary of some of his language. Um, it doesn't help any that this story is set in the African bush. Um, Harry and his wife have gone on kind of a safari. Um, so there are some geographical terms, geological terms and things like that that you're not familiar with because you don't live in Africa. Uh, and the Cliff's Notes will explain those for you too. I have also given you plenty of time to read this story. I'm not going to go over the whole week's schedule for you because that's in your packet and linked on the NTI page. But what I do not want you to do, please do not do, is try and sit down on one day and read this long, challenging story and write your paper. Don't do it. Uh, you shouldn't have to spend a bit more than 20 minutes a day on it but break the story up into chunks. And I have done that for you in your schedule. Recommended places to start and stop. Now, if you're a very strong reader and instead you'd like to read the story in one sitting and then maybe go back and, and study the Cliff's Notes and then maybe work on your paper for a couple of days, you could do that. But do not attempt to do this whole week's worth of work in one sitting. It will frustrate and overwhelm you and I don't want that for you. We've all got enough running through our heads right now without you making your life any harder. So I have broken it up for you and told you where I, I would recommend you stop to do basically 15, 20 minutes a day, slow and steady and get to the end. And that's it. One story, one paper. And it's a short paper at that. Um, here's what I want you to do. And this is your summative for this unit because it brings together skills that you've, we've really been working on for the whole unit. Um, it brings together um, reading longer and more complex texts. Um, it brings together a, a clear understanding of modernism, which we've been working on, um, comparing and contrasting literary works and characters, which we've been doing in little bits all the way along, and applying critical ideas to texts. So, here is the question. Treat it like the biggest essay question on an essay test. Here is the question. Look at Jay Gadsby from The Great Gadsby, Granny Weatherall from The Jilting of Granny Weatherall, and Harry in The Snows of Kilimanjaro. How are they each appropriate examples of American modernism? Now, you can look at just the modernist hero if you want to, or you can spin out into any of those elements of modernism that are in your sidebar, which I have given you on the, the introduction sheet for this week's NTI in your packet on the NTI link. It also gives you that question. So basically, you're going to take those three characters and in a short paper, explain how they are examples of modernism in American literature. It's not that hard. I don't think you can do it in less than about 200 words, but I don't want you writing a term paper. Um, this is your summative, so this is kind of your chance to show off everything you know about American modernism. So. You may want to go up to maybe up to two pages. Um, five is too many. This is a short paper. I want it to be something that you could have written in class as an essay test. So don't go off the deep end. Uh, a couple of pages is plenty. Now, obviously, if you're in AP language and composition, your paper should be on the longer 
end of that appropriate spectrum, so should probably be over a page. Um, and if you are in AP Language and Composition, you and you use any outside sources, including the Cliff's Notes, those need to be cited in the text appropriately, and you will need a works cited page for that. But even if you are in AP Language and Composition, no outside source is required. You can do all of this right out of your own head without any help. Uh, but if you do want to resort to some outside text and you are in AP Language and Comp, uh, I want to see accurate citations. Um, let's see if there's anything else to be said there. I don't think so. This is a pretty simple week. As long as you break it up into chunks and, and take it in little bites, it's really not overwhelming. Um, and I will leave you at this point with a story about Hemingway that I think <laughs> once you've read The Snows of Kilimanjaro, you're going to see how this would be believable. Um, this story is probably legend. It's probably completely made up. But the fact that it has persisted as long as it has tells you something about Hemingway's reputation and what a character he was. Um, and Arthur C. Clarke, the science fiction writer, has, has told this story. Uh, apparently, Hemingway was at lunch supposedly at the at the, the lounge of the Algonquin Hotel, in other words, the bar, uh, with a bunch of his writer friends. And he gets into basically an argument with another writer. In some versions of the story, it's Dashiell Hammett, uh, but it's, it's often a, a different writer each time. But he gets into an argument because he says that the shorter a story is, the better it will be, regardless. And the other writer, we'll say it was Dashiell Hammett, um, insists that there's a limit to how short you can go. He, you know, he says, if you're to have any emotional impact, people have to care about the characters. And that means you've got to introduce those characters and, and, and make people feel for them and stuff like that. He's like, you can't do it in less than a few hundred words. And Hemingway says, oh, that's ridiculous. I can do it in six. And Hammett says, that's insane. Nobody can produce a story with any meaningful emotional impact in less than 50 words. And Hemingway keeps insisting that he can do it in six words. He can produce a story with real emotional impact in six words or less. Well, in six words, in a, with a maximum of six words. So finally, he says, but you, okay, put your money where your mouth is. Write the, write the six-word story for us, and if we agree, we will buy your drinks for the rest of the day. So, Hemingway says, okay. Here's what he writes, according to legend. For sale, baby shoes. Never won. Have fun. <laughs>